I get to D.C. and after I won in, in, in 2014, it was the most amazing thing. You would think that you were in Vienna in some sort of, of uh, uh, fairy tale. The army choir is singing, the, the filet mignon is on the plate, the, the speaker of the house, and you have a historian from the Library of Congress, and, and you are just wined and dined. And there's one message in that whining and dining. If you play the game the way we want you to play the game, life is very good in Washington, D.C. Now, being a prosecutor, I didn't quite like the way the game was played. And, and I was with a number of people in the Freedom Caucus that didn't like the way the game was played. And I also learned the, the uh, flip side of that. If you don't play the game the way we want you to play the game, life is not going to be very pleasant for you in Washington, D.C. And so I decided pretty early on that I was never going to be a chairman. I was never going to be in leadership. Um, and I'm probably not going to be there that much longer. Um, but I can... <laughs> My friend Jim Jordan, anybody ever hear of Jim Jordan here? He's a congressman from Ohio, and, and he was the uh, original chair of the, of the Freedom Caucus. And, and Jim comes up to me, and he puts his arm around me, and he says, Ken, after he read this book, he said, Ken, how long do you plan on staying in Congress? <laughs> I said, well, Jim, not real long. He says, that's a good thing. <laughs> so um, there is a reality to that. But, uh, you know, I... Um, my, my fundraiser, Janelle Domenico, is back there. She doesn't like to hear that because that, that means we're not going to raise any money anymore. So. Um, but, but uh, you know, we, we voted against um, a rule. And, and in Congress, there's, there's a real simple uh, law that you follow, and that is you never cross leadership on a procedural vote. And so we voted against a rule. And uh, um, uh, I, they went after, uh, I was the president of the freshman class, and, and the freshman freshman class is really a great title because it has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> you know, you don't have any extra voting privileges, you don't have committee assignments, you don't have anything. All it is is a group of freshmen on the first day they meet each other, they elect somebody. I don't know whether I was the tallest or the oldest or, or what it was, but I, I, won that, I won that position. And it has, there's no job function. I mean, you can call a meeting, nobody shows up. So that was my job, president of the freshman class. Well, they decided to go after me as president of the freshman class. It was a meaningless position. I mean, now, if you held a meaningless position that went after you, most of the people would say, yeah, go ahead, take it. I don't care. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I got all my friends together. We shut down eight members of Congress phones. They had to actually turn the phone onto their uh, um, voicemail. And, and not receive calls anymore. We had tens of thousands of people across America saying, you can't take this position. They had no idea what president of the class did, neither did I, but they did know that, that it was wrong to retaliate against somebody. They tried to take Mark uh, Meadows' uh, chairmanship away on, on uh, a subcommittee. So uh, there's this retaliation. And, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, uh, um, keep secret. They're, they're trying to suppress the knowledge of what goes on back there. I have to pay $450,000 to serve on the committees I serve on. Outrageous. And it's not to reduce the national debt, folks. It's to the Republican Party. You pay money to get a committee assignment. Well, where do you raise that money? You raise the money from the special interests in Washington, D.C. And what do the special interests expect you to do for that money? They expect you to vote the way they want you to vote. So there's this little game. They want to see those dues increased. Because then you need them more. And when you need them more, they own you. And you have to vote. And we never vote in D.C. to do what Weld County does, which is no tax, no sales tax, and balance your budget um, and have no debt. No, we vote to pile more and more debt on to our national debt. Think about it. We have $600 billion of deficit spending this year, $600 billion. We do not have a major war. We do not have a major recession. And we have $600 billion of deficit spending. 
When do we get to a balanced budget? We don't under the current rules. One other really, I, I, really eye-opener for me, the Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973. And they get members to vote for things with absolute lies. And, and, I, and you just, it's, you know, the first time they told me some lies, I, I, I was, oh, okay. And then some of my friends said, Psst, it's a lie. I said, no, they're Republic, they're not lying to me, no. It's a lie, folks. So the Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973, and it had a five-year sunset on it. So they get you to vote for something. They say, listen, if this isn't good, if this doesn't work, it's going to go away in five years. We're going to sunset this in five years. So in 1978, they reauthorized Endangered Species Act. It has not been reauthorized since 1978, and it gets appropriated money to the agencies that enforce the Endangered Species Act. Now, the Endangered Species Act I talk a lot about in the book because I think it is a great example of what's wrong with America. There are five, over 5,000 species now listed on the Endangered Species Act. In the history of the Endangered Species Act, 17 species have been taken off of the Endangered Species Act. So we have 5,000 critters that are endangered, and we've only taken 17 off. So the the head of the Fish and Wildlife Service was in front of the committee I was on, and I asked him, I said, how many um, of these critters were actually saved of the 17? And he said, oh, 12 were extinct before we put them on. <laughs> and when we found that out, we took them off. So five out of 5,000 have been saved. The bald eagle, one of them, and that's great. I'm glad we, we learned what we learned about DDT. I'm glad that we, we saved our national symbol. But understand something, it's not used as a shield for fuzzy little critters. It is used as a sword against energy development, against residential development, against uh, those things that we need in our economy in this country. And that sword is used because the federal government uh, has, has created a system that is now being abused. And Congress refuses to do its job, refuses to do the oversight and take the tough votes that are necessary. So why? Why does Congress do that? The answer is very simple. We don't want to lose our jobs. If I vote to, to do away with the endangered species, actually if I vote to do away with it, I, I become king in fourth congressional district, but if, <laughs> if somebody in a tough seat in New York State votes to do away with the uh, Endangered Species Act, what happens to them? Well, they have all these commercials run against them, that they hate little fuzzy critters and, and they're a terrible person and we should, we should uh, throw this person out of office. So selfishness becomes the number one priority in Congress. And so we avoid tough votes at any expense, any expense. 